Joining us now is Ryan Williams, uh, who's the chairman and founder over at Cadre. Ryan, good to see you. Before we launch into that, though, I got to ask you about this report from the information a couple of weeks ago about uh, fundraising. Just to, to clear the air on that, how challenging has it been uh, to fundraise in this environment? And, and you know, what, what are your prospects going forward? Hey, John, good to be with you. Thank you for having me. Um, the first thing I'll say is that there's a lot that's reported that's inaccurate. Um, nearly everything in that article you referenced was inaccurate. Um, but what's not inaccurate is that it is challenging in this environment to raise money, period. Real estate, venture, private equity, I don't care what space or sector you're in. And so, um, you know, that is the truth uh, for sure. Um, but in our case, we have significant interests, both in the GP as well as the LP side of our business. Uh, we've raised significant capital. Nearly every one of our major investors have backed us and continue to back us. And we're focusing now on playing offense. Um, you know, I always say that with volatility comes opportunity. And that's our perspective at Cadre. And we're on the strongest footing we've been uh -huh. uh, since I founded the business. Well, well, tell me about opportunity, particularly in office. I think the last time you and I talked, you, you were saying how uh, multifamily was a bit more of your portfolio. That's been doing well. Maybe you had some target regional uh, office properties that you, you felt were shielded from what's going on in, in the broader market. But I'm starting to see stories about uh, property selling at, you know, an 80% discount. Are, are you looking at those even in places like San Francisco? At what point do you decide as an investor it makes sense to get in? Yeah, it's, it's uh, I would say it's the quiet and calm before the storm, but I think we're past that point. I think we're just on the precipice of, of the storm. I mean, we're hearing and seeing fire sale-like offers across the board in the office space. Um, and I think that signals it's a new chapter for the sector. And it's a new chapter in which those who are willing to play offense and invest um, can capitalize on some of these dislocations. That's why we uh, have launched a, a new fund offering um, and I think the sectors that are going to be most interesting uh, are micro office assets, for instance, uh, where you may like the tenant base. Um, others may shy away from the space at large. Um, and so we are sharpshooters. We're micro investors. We think there's always opportunity, even in tough macro environments. Uh, but you got to be careful and you have to acknowledge that the fundamental demand picture has changed. People are not returning back five days a week. Genie's out the bottle. And I think that's actually a good thing. Um, and so office as an overall sector, you know, we don't generalize and say we're not touching it, but we're being incredibly selective. And then on the other side, we're leaning in even more heavily to multifamily and industrial. And then on multifamily, uh, you just saw data recently that existing home sales um, continue to drop, just given lower seller inventory, given where mm -hmm. rates are, um, and inflation. And so multifamily on a relative basis is a much more attractive sector to be investing in. People are renting longer. I know a lot of folks in my millennial contingent uh, are, are staying in rentals longer, and yeah. uh, we like that play. Yeah. I mean, when you talk about dislocations, it's pretty clear that we're, we're have, we have dislocations within the office market. Um, what's not as clear to me is if you're seeing the same sort of meaningful dislocations in things like multifamily or whether more time needs to play out and you need to see prices come down even further to really have meaningful investments right now. I believe there will be dislocations across and, and distress across every major asset class, multifamily included. And the reason is, um, while there may not be stress uh, at the propco level, there's going to be stress at the opco level. Many of these operators, developers, managers invest across asset classes, and they're going to need liquidity. And so if they need liquidity, they're going to look to their crown jewel assets to sale, and multifamily typically fits that bill. So I do think you will begin to see distress. I also think there are a lot of owners, operators, developers um, who took on leverage right as the Fed was raising rates um, and, uh, and now are facing negative operating leverage across multifamily investments. A lot of the hot markets, you know, you think about those in the Southeast and Southwest, mm -hmm. uh, are going to cool down pretty quickly uh, as people reckon with this new reality, which is we're in a different capital markets environment Regional banks are on unsteady footing, and um, you know the rubber's going to meet the road pretty soon when people have to refinance, sell, or otherwise.